So Tommy is officially back, and what a way to start Power Book 4 Force. It brought all the OG power vibes back, in terms of all the characters, not just Tommy. There was everything from death, sex, violence, action, and drugs. And as Simon found out, Tommy isn't someone you want to mess around with, but neither are the Flynn family, and Walter Flynn has certainly warned Tommy to get out of his city. But regardless of him being warned and Rodolfo's constant phone calls, Chicago is more than just a pit stop for Tommy and I did wonder what the connection was to JP Gibbs and it's been answered in episode 1. JP is Tommy's brother, so I definitely think there's going to be more secrets we learn as we move through season 1. Now Gloria has a deep history as does Diamond and Janard Samson and we got a taste of their backstory as we watched the close relationship between the two brothers but it's going to be interesting because it seems like he may have some enemies just like Tommy does but we're going to break down everything from Power Book 4 Force Episode 1 in this review and recap. But of course, there is only one place to start and that's with Tommy driving into Chicago. He's thinking about everything that's happened in his past from Kate, Holly, Rayner, Spanky, Tariq and Lakeisha and as he came to a crossroad in his life, he thought of Ghost and letting out this huge painful yell and the background music set the tone, Tommy set the tone and certainly Chicago set the tone. So as Tommy enters Chicago, the first place he goes to is his grandma's house but he gets a phone call from Rodolfo because Tommy is actually supposed to be on his way to LA and at this moment, Chicago was just a pit stop but as we follow Tommy, there was more than one reason why he's staying and we'll run through all of these in this video. But straight away we were introduced to Tommy again and he makes his presence felt but he's after this old lady that used to live in this house who's been moved to a nursing home and this is Tommy's grandma, Miriam Egan. But the thing is, he's not ready to face his skeleton of his past, not yet anyway. So instead, he goes for a drink at Dr. Parker's office where he meets Gloria and she's good at reading people but maybe because she's had a lot of trauma in her life as well. But definitely not worse than Tommy's because we saw the flashback of Tommy buying Lakeisha a ring with cash and you can sense at the beginning, Tommy is definitely still hurting but we learn that she's married and she's got a history with Vic Flynn. They've got this on-off relationship but it's complicated from Vic's side because it doesn't seem like Walter Flynn would approve of Gloria because he's an old school gangster and we'll get to the Flynn's in just a moment. But here's where he runs into Vic, Simon and Uncle Paulie and you really get the sense that Simon he's a hothead and someone who's always going to be looking for trouble and this was always going to end badly for Simon. We see Tommy doing classic Tommy things when he beats Simon up and breaks his wrist but has Simon learned his lesson or will he be back for more? That's the question. But this was also the start of Tommy entering the drug scene in Chicago because Simon was due to collect some product with Vic Flynn from someone called Zaymost and in typical power fashion. I'm sure we'll keep hearing the name Zaymost for a while until we find out who he is but he does sound like someone who's playing between the CBI and Vic Flynn. But Tommy's forcing his way into this meeting showed him a few things. Firstly, Vic was stupid enough to come to a re-up without having all his cash but this was also the first time he met Janard Samson but these two knuckleheads Owen and Bruno they were coked out of their faces and they had to get caught because it was Tommy who saved Janard's gun jamming ass and then he bounced with their drugs and paper. And he went back to visit his grandma where she remembered who he was after the photo that he showed her but this led Tommy into meeting JP Gibbs and as I suspected there was definitely a deeper connection between these two characters and he's Tommy's brother. Now he whipped out the same tattoo which was written on the back of Tommy's picture and they both stood there trying to process just what happened. This is the first time they've ever met and know of each other for all of Tommy's life and in power Kate never mentioned that she has another son but I'm sure we'll find out more secrets because Tommy took JP's number and decided to keep it but at this point he was still on his way to LA but with Rodolfo blowing up his phone he was pissing him off but at this time he was interrupted by Walter Flynn's muscle, Uncle Paulie who warned him before that he doesn't want to mess with the Flynn's but Tommy's always had a short fuse and a long memory and he was taken to the Walter Flynn residence, a big country house by the lake and Walter is definitely a man who makes his presence felt. He's an old school gangster who tells Tommy that a man with no clock has two things, too much time or too much money but eventually you're going to run out of both which is the case for Ghost. But Walter Flynn basically told him that the beef that he caused in Chicago, he'll deal with a fallout but he better get the fuck out of his city. But the problem is, when someone tells Tommy what to do, he does the complete opposite and he's here to stay. He told Rodolfo that he's his own boss and now we're going to start to see Tommy building in real time. We're going to watch him sandwich himself between the Flynn family and Diamond and Janard. So having said that, let's move on and talk all things Diamond and Janard Samson, the Chicago Brothers Incorporated. And we're introduced to Diamond while he's in prison. 
we see him cutting hair and this old man definitely strikes me of someone who's had an impact on Diamond's life since he's been inside. But while Diamond's been inside for 15 years, it also seems like he's made some enemies and Rojas, this inmate, he said let's wait until he gets comfortable on the outside then we'll make the call to get him. So Tommy's not the only one with enemies, Diamond seems like he's someone who has some as well but he's also very well respected by others and the gods know that he's smart because he's someone who spent his time reading all the classics from history to philosophy but Diamond treats people with respect and he shows it when he lets the god keep his Jordans after he was given a gift himself. So we saw him walking out just in his socks and this tells us he's just happy to be a free man, reunited with his brother Jannard but someone who will definitely go through this period of adjustment because he's been inside for 15 years where he's had to follow all the rules and live in a certain way which is probably why he's sleeping on the floor in his apartment because he can't sleep in a normal bed because it's not normal to him. But what else isn't normal is these streets. They used to run these streets before he went inside but all the crews that they came up with they're either fractured or they're falling or there's too much beef within the crews. And Diamond questioned Jannard, why is he doing business with these two yardies and how could he let Tommy just roll up on him and bounce with his paper and drugs. But the thing is, Tommy wasn't working with Vic either, he was his own man, someone who just strolled into Chicago and ran that room, just like Casper the Ghost. And I do wonder, will this be Tommy's nickname in Chicago, Casper, and an easter egg and connection to Power Book 2 Ghost. Kane also called Brayden, Casper in Power Book 2 Ghost, Episode 10. But this is where we get to learn more about Diamond and Jannard's backstory. This is where they grew up, where they were baptized and where Chicago Brothers Incorporated came from. This barbershop means a lot more to Diamond and Jannard didn't just pay the rent to this place, he bought it for his brother. They clearly have a lot of love for each other but with Diamond being inside for 15 years, he said he's changed and he wants to do things differently because he's done killing people and there is always one person in power across all the shows we've seen who wants to leave the game behind. So could this be Diamond in Power Book 4 Force? But as we all know as much as you try and leave the game something will always keep pulling you back in. And just something to keep our eyes on was this person who walked in, law enforcement, a very subtle hint with the badge which Diamond definitely clocked. So let's keep our eyes on this situation and just to finish on Jannard Samson, the reason why he has a cauliflower ear is because he's a mixed martial arts fighter and he's not afraid to throw his hands so this is something I definitely think we'll see as the season goes on. So Diamond seems like more of the calm one and Jannard he's definitely wild. So that's the Samson brothers which brings me on to the Flins. Now we've already spoken a little about Vic and Walter but Walter he's the head of the largest crime family in Chicago. He's been in the head of the game for 30 years and you can tell. He is a really old school gangster who has his kids playing these certain positions. He has Vic going down and doing the street shit, collections, re-ups and whatever else. But with Claude he has to do in the books and keeping things looking legit. But the thing is she wants a bigger role and she wants more power. But it doesn't seem like she's gonna get this for as long as Walter's in charge because he is definitely old school. So we see Claude getting down and dirty with Mai and she's someone who digs chicks but also seems like someone who may be involved with Tommy as well from the teasers and trailers we've seen and maybe because she's not getting this power from Walter she may think she can get it working with Tommy and Claude she definitely has doubts about Vic's ability to do things that he's tasked with. She questions his decision making in working with the Yardies because although it's a new revenue stream it's a bad product and bad product is bad for business. And she also mentioned the Flynn family they don't fuck with coke but again just like the Samson brothers we learn a bit of backstory from the Flynn's with Claude and Vic's mom who's already passed away as we start Power Book 4 Force and no doubt we learn more as we run through the season and that's the breakdown of the first episode of Power Book 4 Force and it certainly did bring back all the old power vibes from Tommy to Diamond and Jannard to the Flynn family. This episode proved that this is a true continuation from power and it's only going to get darker and better. So with that being said, drop all your thoughts on what you thought of the premiere of Force and of course we're going to be back in the week dissecting key storylines and events for both Ghost and Force. So of course if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already then remember to smash the subscribe button if you want to see everything Power Book 4 Force and Power Universe related. But as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.